today's repair might be of interest to you people with caravans. I'm going to be fixing this uh, Sergeant EC225 charging unit. I'm told it does everything it should do apart from charge the battery which is sort of its major job in life. It's a fairly straightforward unit inside to the four screws and the lids off. Here we've got like the mains distributions or the circuit breakers and an RCD. Always a good thing to have. This will be the actual power supply for the charging. It'll be 13.8 volt output for charging lead acid batteries. And these are the input and output fuses and just down here. Just angle this towards you a bit. It says a control circuit there. It's got relays on, so I don't think there's much in the way of you know anything too clever going on in that part. So my money is the fault is in there. The screws of the charger are on the back of this, and these screws look pretty uh <laughs> the heads are a bit rounded. I'm not confident I'm the first person to come in here. This is a little concerning. The terminals are well labelled on this as well. This is pretty easy. Well, I'm just going to check this on the bench first, just put some power in it and see what it does. So I get a bit of diagnostics from uh, the way it takes the mains power in when you turn it on. So I've got this test lead, just going to connect it up. I'm just going to connect the, um, <laughs> the earth clip on some part of the chassis. Yeah, there will do. Just connect a meter. To the output uh, connections. So we're going to go for the power on. And not a sausage. This thing is dead. Now we could tell something from that test that it actually pulled no current whatsoever. So first thing to say without opening it, I think there's an internal fuse that's blown. And um, fuses tend to mean primary side short, so main chopper transistor something like that. Let's get it open. Just want to see where to start with opening this. There's screws all over the place. Are we is it off? Oh, two more screws around the back. These are very short screws. <laughs> a few things I see already, this is in a bit of a mess. I can see this capacitor's bulged and it looks like this splatter here, it's something sprayed out. I think the electrolyte's gone on that, that's vented that has. Looks pretty nasty, there's all residue all along the edge there. Yeah, at least I think so. This isn't very good stuff at all. I also see there's the main fuse, that's blown to hell that is. Yeah, I need to fetch this out. This is in quite a bad way, really. That's all the screws out. Right, now it's trapped because the transistors are stuck to the heatsink. Sort of pry them off with a screwdriver just to free them up. Because they've been stuck there a while. They don't want to move. Let's see if I can get a little pallet knife uh, underneath just to leave those off. Otherwise we'll go through the uh, the insulating uh, material. Then we'll have to replace that as well. And we're out. View at the bottom of the board. Pretty clean really, nothing um, Nothing I can see that looks like anything's uh, exploded underneath. Uh, there's no surface mount parts on the bottom either. So a bit easier to uh, trace through really. So just going through this we've got a fuse. I'm going to write a list of parts it needs. So we've got an F 5 amp fuse. Fast blow 5 amp. That's gone. No surprise there. Let's get the meter on. We've got too many multimeters. <laughs> no such thing actually is too many. It's like having too many oscilloscopes. <laughs> Silly idea that would be. So just going to be looking for things that were blow fuses. What 
I mean the bulging cap that suggests to me that we've got a short um, bridge rectifier possibly so it might have put AC into this capacitor the layout of this is going to roughly be the power is going to come in from this side to the fuse this is all sort of the EMC filter in fact there's the bridge rectifier hiding there this is sort of EMC stuff and it gets stored on this big capacitor like that will store the big, typically 327 volts in the UK um, I was just looking this doesn't look like it's got power factor correction which is a bit uh, it, easier to deal with um, or it could have there's a little control chip that does all the all the work this transformer here this yellow part this is the part that actually converts the you know the input and the output voltage these two things are probably diodes to rectify that chop that uh, transformed uh, AC um, back into a DC and you've got an output choke and output filter caps then straight out um, most power supplies are all much of a muchness I'm going to have to start on soldering parts um, I've just measured the, the uh, straight across the capacitor um, you know it's a dead short so this thing is in a very sorry state but we'll see how sorry it is in a moment so I'm just going to desolder this is the bridge rectifier Little ferrite beads on the legs so we'll take it off upside down those are sure to get lost let's just check with the multimeter if um, that is actually short circuit or not and it's not and we got 0 0.5, 0 0.5 perfect so the bridge rectifier is actually okay we'll park that there try not to lose the ferrite beads so if I measure across the uh, positive and negative terminals it's still short circuit um, so what I'm going to do now we know the capacitor had bulged and ex expanded its lid so over here this is uh, next to come out I've already checked actually there's no voltage um, present on there but of course because it is short circuit and it's blowing the fuse it hasn't had any voltage on it for a long time That's that out. Have we still got a short circuit? Yes, but less of one. That was I'll put that back on ohms. So I'm thinking this is probably Oh wow. Wow, it's uh, still functional. I'm still replacing it though because it's uh, it definitely has had a bad time. Okay, next we're gonna take out the chopper transistors because just break those loose off there oh. just unsolder those see if the short's gone where was that capacitor there it was that's more like it 400 kilo ohms much better so these are uh, blown and covered in capacitor juice, <laughs> whatever that juice is. I can get these insulating sleeves off. They're probably both the same. It's a 16N50C3. So that's going to be a 16 amp, 500 volt uh, N channel MOSFET. This will be a different one. Okay, we have a a K4115 I'm surprised they're not the same well after a little bit of uh, uh, consideration I've just determined that the the one transistor they are different they're probably doing different jobs and um, the Toshiba K4115 actually works okay a good way of testing a MOSFET uh, you can do it with your multimeter on diode test mode uh, you can actually turn it on and off with the meter I'll show you how it's done let's turn the meter on set it to diode drop mode now if you use the middle pin which will be the drain connection so you've got a gate drain and source put your red lead positive lead on there measure the source which is the right hand lead with your black lead you've got no no voltage drop if you then touch the red lead onto the 
left hand pin which is the gate then put it back to the middle you've now got what appears to be a shorter connection because we've actually charged the gate up we can do that again you can turn it off by touching it with the black lead onto the gate and going back there you go, on, off so we're going to put the that start second transistor back in, that is uh, Q2 um, with the two ferrite uh, beads on it, <laughs> on its legs so put that back in, put the bridge rectifier back in and then we're going to replace the shorted parts with new ones and then we're going to gently power it up on a DC power supply uh, rather than stick AC in it with the mains voltage and just in case there's anything else we might have a damaged driver chip or something and probably the quickest way is just to put put it on the 300 volt power supply so I'm going to start with putting the bridge rectifier back in the circuit board make sure the ferrite beads are uh, still connected on there or still sat nicely just push the pins into the holes in the board exactly how it came out then we can just sit that upside down might keep a little finger against there get the solder oh. feed a bit of solder in doesn't matter what order you do these in just patience let that one just cool down okay now we're good just to solder all of them Make sure I don't drop the uh, little ferrite beads off it. There we go. We quickly just tack some solder on. And here are the new parts we're going to fit. We've got the new fast blow 5 amp fuse that just clips in there then we've got a new uh, main DC capacitor main filter cap for the power supply and then we've got the replacement uh, MOSFET uh, not forgetting the tiny ferrite bead we just pop that on there it's on the centre pin right let's solder these in Time to shoot those little off cuts across the workshop. They didn't go too far. Now I put the power supply board to the other bench because this bench has got uh, some slightly different equipment on it which includes a 300 volt DC power supply which I mentioned I was going to use rather than put AC in it because I can really control how much power goes in real down to a real small level. Uh, also we've got a multimeter rigged up there to measure the output voltage let's turn it on and see if it works or not or smoke and it's in current limit <laughs> bad news I'm just going to get the thermal imaging camera out now get that onto the uh, circuit and see if it shows me where all that energy is going something's getting warm let's turn it on again so we are current limit Where's it going hot? And it's Q1 transistor. Probably just changed. So there's something taking that out. So after a bit of poking around, I've found I might have missed some more damage. Um, there's two diodes on here, and they both measure about four or five ohms across each one. I'm not sure these two here. I'm not sure if it's both or one or neither I'm not sure how the circuit's laid out the easiest thing is just unsolder them and see what's good just unscrew the this diode from the heat sink <laughs> that'll make life <laughs> a lot easier let's get the iron a bit of solder 
tip this over, see if I can get it to uh, come out without a fight. There's some large areas of copper on here, so take a bit of heating up. Let's get something to uh, give this a push with. And she's out. Let's measure the uh, resistance across it now. Yeah, 4.7 ohms. That's knackered. Just a diode test on here. Open circuit that way, put it the other way around. 0.5 volt drop, that's normal. Just the one broken then. Yeah, this broken thing, this, uh, this is an 8 amp 600 volt diode there. Fairly common. I'll have a little rummage around in the parts bins and see what I've got. Well, I've found one so already. There we go. Think this will do. Just check the data sheets online, it looks similar. Good enough for here. Let's put the screw in. It's a good idea to put the screw in before you solder the leads. Solder that back up. Let's give this thing a whirl. Power on. And we've got output. 13.9 volts. A little bit of twitching on the power supply, not much. That's just it regulating so there's no load on it. We've got to put this back together. Well I'm pleased with that result. So it was a uh, Q1 transistor, a diode D2 had gone and the fuse oh, and the capacitor. Four parts took this thing down. I'm going to put these little uh, insulating covers back over the transistors. Just a little bit of heat sink compound, not too much. Slide that over there. And that one. <laughs> Fuck me sideways. I should remind everyone before they get too involved with these things uh, to discharge the capacitor. There's over 300 volts on these things and uh, it'll wake you up. There we go, very quickly it discharges, very fast to get rid of that. There we go, a bit safer now. Screw this clamp back on. This clamp secures the transistors into the chassis using it as a heatsink. Also contains a thermal cutout switch. Unlike the one on the output diode, which doesn't have any such cutout switch. Although to be fair, they shouldn't get that hot. Okay, that's pretty much back together. I think all back together, good as new. Let's give a little go on the main supply. Perfect. 13.9 volts. No messing about on the input current. Beautiful. Right, for the load test I've dug out this old electronic load. I have to remember how to set this up. So it's on with 13.9 volts. This is pretty good. Turn the output on. Just dial up some current. We're now drawing 1 amp some load under it. Seems happy, 13.84 volts. Probably the voltage drop in these cables. 
Let's wind it up a bit more. So we've got a working power supply to put it back into this charging unit and uh, away it goes. Beautiful job too. And that's done. She's great news for all the caravanners. Catch you next time.